<laughs> so welcome to the straight red card. I forgot to hit the go live button. Of all things. I knew this was going to be a disaster. Oh, this is going to be amazing. We've been doing the show, guys, for like 10 minutes already. We none of us realized that Derek's not live. Oh, man. I forgot to hit the go live button. That is why Brett just called me and said, you're not on, dummy. <laughs> oh, Woo! God. And we haven't even touched the weed yet. I know. I know. Maybe I should have. Um, well, anyhow, just to sum this up. We actually screwed the uh, the turn the backgrounds message then because we got to move on with the show, right? I mean, we can't just go backwards and relive Jeff. Yeah, calling we got to go. That is just that you know that's ten minutes that you and I will always remember. And I realize okay. there's a lot of innuendo with that statement. <laughs> People are gonna have a lot of fun with it, but we'll go with it. You know, whatever happened happened. And we just were talking about your the commercial, your anal itch commercial you were filming in Denver, and now we got to just. <laughs> We got to skip right over it. All right. Sorry, Sorry about that. Guys, you don't get to hear about that. Yeah, we're going to pat. But yeah, so um, you, you do acting. That's sort of one of the things you do, as yeah. we were talking about. Um, are you like a method actor? Where you just kind of learn no, your lines? I, um, no, not really. I'm not one of those people that has to like, you know, really become the person outside of set. I try to turn it on and off. when I'm playing a character. And to be fair, most of the characters that I play are pretty blasé law enforcement types. You know, it's not, yeah. they're not always that interesting or their job is not to be interesting, but rather to move the story along for the most part. Um, yeah. So it's not like I need to get all method. Although if I have like an emotional character or a scene to play, obviously I'll use some of my own past traumas <laughs> to get <laughs> me there emotionally, but I wouldn't call myself a method actor. No. So, yeah, because Jim, Jim Carrey apparently gets really into his parts to the point where he wants to be called that person. Yeah. Whether he's working or not working. And Marlon Brando was somewhat similar, but I don't think that nuts because, you well, know, I get. Yeah. I mean, Andy Kaufman, when he when Jim Carrey was doing Andy Kaufman, he was like Andy Kaufman for a half a year. Yeah. And that's just weird. Well, um, nobody's worse than uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis is the worst of the method actors like when he was doing my left foot he wouldn't leave his wheelchair when they would yell cut like he would demand that they carry him around the set carry him to lunch feed him he, he became the character and people started to get annoyed with him because naturally you're like yeah. oh, we all know you can walk and talk and eat why are you making us do this to me if you have to go that method and this is going to anger daniel day lewis fans but i think that means you're not very good because I think mm. a good actor can turn it on and turn it <laughs> off. And if you can't do that, well, then you have to go to extremes. And look, do whatever you have to do. Right. But I also don't like infringing on other people's space to do it. You know, I, I, mean? I would hate to have known him when he was playing Bill the Butcher. Oh, did Jason. you ever hear Leo's story about that? No, I didn't. What so is it? this is Daniel Day Lewis. He's such a like hipster wannabe, right? He's like, oh, I'm not going to act anymore. And then instead of like going and becoming an accountant, like a normal person, he he becomes a cobbler. So he goes to Italy and he makes shoes, like 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 sews leather shoes together. Okay, you know whatever. Yeah. Uh, Scorsese wanted him for that. They got Leo on board, and he asked Leo to come with him to Italy to convince Daniel Day Lewis to do the part because he had retired from acting. Sure. So. You know, whatever. Eventually, they they get him to do it. That story is not that interesting. The interesting part is when they get to New York and they built this whole like fake village. You know, that was the set of the movie. And as they're in rehearsals, whatever, Daniel Day Lewis is fine. Day one, Leo says he's walking onto set in the morning and he sees Daniel sort of across the way, also coming to set. So he puts his arm up and he goes, "Hey, Daniel, morning." And Daniel looks at him and goes. Jesus and it's like, Christ. oh shit. <laughs> He's in the role. He's already there. So did you have you ever um had you did you eventually get around to seeing Boogie Nights? No, I never did. You should I never did. I think I text you. This is not text you, it must have been a message many, many eons ago. And I said, you know, I hear they're doing Boogie Nights too. And oh, really? they're, they're looking for uh, you know, new actors to play in the role which originally the lead role was Mark Wahlberg and uh, there were Burt Reynolds was in it. 
And okay. of course, it's about the porn industry in the 1970s. Right. Really good movie. You should check it out. But Dirk Diggler and all that. Uh, did you see the new Napoleon movie? Last acting question. I did not see it. I heard I wanted to see it. And then I heard a lot of disheartening things about it. I also didn't love that, like, you know, 25 year old Napoleon was being played by early 50s Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, it's horrible. You didn't really? miss anything. Yeah, no, it was just it was as if a um, let's say a guy who'd never had sex before uh -huh. made a porn movie. Oh, he wow. Was, he, he directed a porn movie like it was completely historically empty uh -huh. of all real information. But you know, it was, I guess, entertaining. OK, but um, yeah, I mean, if you're a historian, it was kind of a bummer. Um, all right. Well, let's get back. We, we did miss this slide, by the way. You all <laughs> missed it. We didn't miss it. Pete is not dead. So I just want to make that really clear. Or this could be AI Pete, for all you know. Yeah. Well, kind of a weird thing. And the pictures of you were rather good, though. So you got to, you know, go with what um, make that. A, that's that's the positive, right? Right, yeah. right. Um, I saw this article as well. Um, has football actually got worse? And I thought mm. you'd be a good person to discuss this with because um, it, I love HITC stuff. Very yeah. fun stuff to watch. Um, but his explanation is pretty good. And mm -hmm. basically he's saying the footballers are actually worse. They're probably as talented as they ever were. Yeah. The real, the real problem is we, we now play systems. Systems. Yeah. Ball. Yeah. Um, anyhow, you're, I don't know if you got to see this, but that would be my explanation too. Yes. Um, I mean, you know, Lionel Scaloni recently came out and talked about this. The guy who led Argentina to a world cup said, you know, my seven-year-old is in a Spanish Academy and he knows what to do, what to, when receiving the ball in a certain situation in terms of decision-making, like what is the correct pass to make? And we're taking the joy out of the game. Players are not allowed to improvise anymore. Everything is subject to the system, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's 100% true. And, and in some ways, I think Guardiola started this. Because Guardiola is a control freak who took yeah. the concept of total football and turned it into, you know, the modern game. And it was very successful and very effective. But let's be honest... You cannot be too much of an individual in, in Guardiola's system. That's why he clashed with Titi Henry and Samuel Eto and Ibrahimovic, because either you are subject to my master plan system or you are nothing. I don't want to work with you, you know? Right. So that's true. You get some beautiful football from a team, but you don't get individual performances that, that are memorable. Like, what was the last individual performance in soccer that you really remember and go, oh, my God? Yeah. Whew. That's a really good question. That's taking me back. Um, yeah, I really, I think that for me, definitely some of the joy of the game started to dissipate mm. um, watching soccer, probably in the like around two, 2014, 2012, I started noticing this brand of soccer that I, you know, uh, people seemed to really like it. They had a name for it. Some people called it Tiki Taka. And mm. I just thought, you know, that's a lot of side passes and a lot of backward passes and a lot of establishing triangles everywhere, which was always a part of the game. But now it seemed like um, measured yeah. and um, joystick. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember one off the top of my head. I know I, I've seen some great performances, obviously, but not sort of like a guy just taking over a game like maybe, say, George Best did or yeah. Diego Maradona could do. Just take over a game all by himself. Yeah. Um, that seems to be a little bit missing these days. So The first uh, – uh, Michael Owen in the 1998 World Cup scored that solo goal against Argentina. I remember that because I was – 11 10 or 11 and yeah. i remember thinking what a player and he was only 18 at the time that was the same game that david beckham got kicked out of red carded for diego simeone yeah. and it was just i was like oh my god it's amazing and, and we still saw that with ronaldinho with ronaldo with certain players um i think the last player that 
outside of let's say Messi and Ronaldo because they're very very special special players and even Neymar and Mbappe let's take those four out of it I feel like everybody else becomes very robotic you know it's a very they play in robotic systems and they do robotic things and they can ratchet up you know Leao came out recently and said that you know everyone's obsessed with stats now in soccer stats goals sure. You know, but he's like, I want to have some fun too. And and so I actually don't mind some of Leal's terrible decision making on the field because he improvises. He'll do things that are not un, you can't predict, they're unusual. He'll try some shit. And right. more football players, soccer players need to try some shit. Like when Gio went on that run against Mexico back in 2022. Brilliant. Right? Yeah, absolutely and, brilliant. And what did that get him? The bench at the World Cup for not being a system player. He got a temporary compliment from Greg. Yeah, That's, that was no, it. Yeah, and a funny press conference, Pulisic. But yeah, um, and then, you know, the one thing you could really depend on, at least even a little while after that, was that international soccer couldn't be joystick like that, right? Coaches just simply did not have the time yeah. to put in a system that rigid. And then Greg managed to do it. And um, in fact, there were two coaches at the World Cup who both said, I've never seen an international team play like a club. I, I don't know if it was always a compliment because I think <laughs> one of the one of the compliments came from the Dutch coach. Um, I can't remember who the other one was, but they were like, it's pretty crazy. And mm -hmm. um, that is what we unfortunately have to live through um, right now. And um, Hopefully uh, that ends. Let me see here. Oh, by the way, people are asking, where's Brett? Brett's on vacay, man. As Method Man says, Brett's on vacation. He's having a good time. He left me here to host a show, and that's why the show was 10 minutes late. Because I'm an idiot. That's why. <laughs> and I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, all right. This is another thing that um, came up I thought I'd bring up, which is I think I may have heard on your show – um, you really didn't think that Sargent could play, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, in the Premier League, and you're a little concerned about him either moving up next season if somebody comes and gets him, yeah. or the small, tiny chance that Norwich actually uh, gets promoted. Yeah. Let me, let, me, let me clarify. I think he can play in the Premier League. I don't think he has the quality to flourish in the Premier League. Okay, that's fair. Um, because I was thinking, yeah, I'd rather him go back to the Bundesliga too. I mean, frankly, I think he'd do great there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I do think, uh, he'll probably, if he does get picked up by a team next season, cause I don't, after watching Norwich today, I don't think they're going to quite make it. Um, then he'll be playing for probably one of the bottom five, six teams would be my mm. guess. That's going to be rough going. Yeah. It's going to be no service and he's a forward that thrives on service. And it's just going to be a lot of running and chasing back and defending and maybe getting an aerial goal every now and then or quick trap. But, I mean, I just don't see it. I think he needs to go. He already, what was his best season for Werder Bremen was nine goals, I think. But right. But he's a lot more mature and experienced now, and I think he's gotten over a lot of the, the mental issues that I think plagued him early in his career with confidence and all that. So I would love to see him back in the Bundesliga, and I think he could easily be a 15-goal season player there. Yeah, I mean, we were hard on him uh, for a good period there, um, basically saying, hey, grow a pair, ask for the ball, demand the ball. Um, and that seems to have gone, and I, I, it seemed to align with his child being born. Like, right after that, something right. happened with him. Yeah. So, um, all right, Jack Pineda says, Brett is getting pegged. That's probably true in Florida um, uh, I because that's where they're vacationing. Oh, okay. EB, EB and Brett are in Florida right now vacationing. So he, I'm sure she brought her bag of tricks. So I'm sure that's what's going on now. Um, and I don't know how to remove that now. That it's up there. <laughs> you just click on the comments, remove the, you click, go to where the comments are. I see that, but it scrolled way up already. No, no. no. So at the top of the little comments uh, box, the, the chat box, yeah. there will be a a button saying remove current chat or something like that. No shit. I don't see that. Anyhow, good. Interesting. We'll just leave it up for a while. Uh, <laughs> until I find another comment to put up. Um. Okay. 
Let's uh, let's do this one too because it, it uh, serves as a good uh, explanation for where Brett is, and you don't have to keep repeating yourself. Exactly. I, I just found the slide. See, this is I'm horrible at this. Brett, come back, rescue me. Um, I'm right. I'm going to remove. Apparently, I have to remove things in order to put new things up. Okay. Yes. I, I get it. Okay. Um, I, listen, I'll let you respond to this first, but uh, this guy says I have that jersey. With your signature on it, I burned it once your right wing nut job self became evident. And Lexi says, Well, that was dumb. Um, I don't know. You want to comment first? I can comment. No, go ahead. Okay, I know it can. You can def, you can say something that might sound political, and that's something we don't really want to do on the show. But I would say this I mean, listen, um, when my parents voted for Bush and Cheney back in whatever years those were. I didn't disown my parents and I didn't throw away all the things they bought me and burn all the shirts they bought me. Okay, and you can say, well, that's your family. So of course you're not gonna do that. But I would just say to this gentleman, um, you know, I would check with your mom first and see, make sure Lexi's not your family, not your dad. And then I guess if it's your shirt, you can burn it all you want. I just found that to be so apropos of this day and age. It's just. Yeah, I don't agree with you on something. Therefore, you must be evil. And yeah. Any any like icon to your memory must be destroyed. Bizarre. Yeah, it is quite bizarre. To be honest, I think Alexi's soccer takes are worse than his political takes. But that's just me. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> and you know, actually, he's been better lately. So Has I mean, he? I've actually yeah, I've actually uh, agreed uh, with him probably the last eight times he's been on the show. Um, here, somebody says this. We'll put something up new. Uh, too many people hate Lawless for his politics rather than his soccer takes. It's so stupid. Yeah, I mean, his soccer takes have been bad at times. Uh, nobody ranted on it more, of course, than I did um, during the Fox coverage. Uh, all right, here's another topic here. Boy, I'm sucking at this, Pete. I really am. Let me see here. Add to stage. There we go. I'm not a complete idiot. Uh, thank you, Chris Gary, for voting for me. Apparently, I can't run a Zoom show so, or a screen yard show. But hey, what do you know? Um, so this this went up, and there was not a single American on it. Mm -hmm. Not surprised. But is there anyone close to making it? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think Anthony... De <sighs> How about Dest, maybe, on the right? Like closest maybe. in three, maybe. four deep, maybe. But now, well, Molina, I mean, this is a World Cup winner, right? And this is a guy who plays in a top, is proven in top five leagues, which yeah. Dest isn't yet, right? right. Yep. So it's hard to say he's close. Um, Guimarães, yeah. <sighs> you haven't junior. seen this? You haven't seen this slide yet? No, I have seen it. Okay. I, I don't think anybody's close. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I you know, mean, this is Brazil and Argentina, and that's it, you know, with like a peppering of one Canadian, one right. Uruguayan, well, two Uruguayans, right? And then one Colombian, you know? And there's, it's, you, I mean, if you're Bayern and uh, you're Thomas Tuchel, I guess you haven't been that, that, uh, that impressed by Alfonso Davies this season. No. No, but I still think he's hard to, it's just, I don't think anybody really, you know, who, who else would make this from, from let's say Brazil or Argentina, Brazil has fullback issues, Yeah, right? right. They've got real fullback issues. And that was evident in the last world cup, Argentina. I mean, who, like who from Argentina could play left back better than Anthony Davies, right? Sorry, Anthony Davies, Alfonso Davies. Alfonso. Yeah. I mean, I guess this might be the closest one then, because going back and thinking, well, the team's there. Left back is, first of all, a rare position. Like, if you can find a great left back, yeah. I mean, they're just hard to find, period. Left footed backs um, yeah. who have the appropriate speed and all the other skills necessary. So maybe this is where Jedi fits in as like maybe one slot behind or two slots behind, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But the bottom line is no. And I don't think anybody, the, the great thing about this in the soccer X hemisphere was nobody really got upset about this. Yeah. 
I mean, we I, know our place. <laughs> right. I think people are, are sensible at this point, or at least there's a good group of people that um, are sensible enough to know that uh, this isn't uh, anything that should be shocking. What I'd be interested in is the next 11, the B team, like the Copa America B team. Would we make any of those? I think Jedi has a good case, but but so does Estupinan. That's the problem. Estupinan is also an, a very good uh, left back. So, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, is it possible? Or Montiel. Montiel. Mm -hmm. Is it possible in five years, Reina yes. could break into this list? I think it's so. possible. But mm -hmm. I said that, like, that's been possible for four years. You yeah. know, the problem is the injuries and the other issues that have sort of crippled his career have been the issue. If he can stop getting injured and get regular playing time and deliver regularly, which I think he can, and there's certainly some signs pointing in that direction at least, then I think he can. I think Gio Reyna can be a world-class player because what's crazy to me, yes, it's Mexico and Jamaica, all right, and they're not good teams, particularly not the Jamaica B team. But for Reyna, who not only was not playing for a long time, whose confidence has to be on, on an all-time low, right, especially after the last year and a half, and was sort of injured or ill coming into camp, to come in and just be our best player almost effortlessly is it, just a reminder of the quality that he has. Yeah. Well, that 30 minutes we just saw at Nottingham Forest was pretty good. Wasn't, um, you know, we're all hoping he would score. Yeah, I mean, he hit that so cleanly um, this weekend that it went straight down the middle, straight to the goalkeeper. He'd yeah. just been like a fraction off. After cutting off cutting his man to create space and then hit it with his weak foot. Right. And I think maybe Nuno has seen something now where he might need to start kind of reconsidering because they, they look pretty good with him out there. They didn't yeah. look to be um, hurting, not even defensively, with him out there. No. No, I think defensively he did put in a shift. I, I said yesterday, I don't think he's ever going to be a great defender, but what you want to see is endeavor to defend. Sure. And particularly when the ball is turned over, that quickness to turn into a defensive-minded player. But he's starting to do that. He did it for the U.S., and he did it on the weekend. So if he keeps that up, that's really all you can ask of a 10. Right. And, you know, here's the other thing. Um, I have all this crow in my freezer that I okay. bought. Um, am I going to have to eat that? Because I'm the one that said, you know, just give it some time. This is going to work out. He's going to get some minutes. It's going to be fine. I may have been wrong. And I was really close to, to defrosting it and getting ready to cook it. Yeah. And then he got 30 minutes out of nowhere after what Nuno said earlier in the week, which was like, eh, you know, everybody wants to play. <laughs> yeah. I can't play them all. Yeah. Um, so am I going to have to eat crow? Is this thing going to work out? <clears throat> I guess we'll see what happens tomorrow. Don't Forrest play tomorrow? They do, yeah. Uh, the thing is, they have two goals in five games. One of those goals came with Giovanni Reyna on the field. Um, their, their attacking core is not cutting it. And to be honest, I wonder if this four-point deduction might be the best thing that ever happened to Gio. Because before... I yeah, because before they were kind of safe. It was like, yeah, Luton, Burnley, Sheffield, none of them are really going to overtake Forrest unless Forrest has a complete meltdown. But if they keep grinding out some draws here and there and the occasional win, they're probably going to survive. Now this four points have put them right down there into the mix and Nuno can't be stubborn and get away with it anymore. And I think goals. that's what happened. He needed a goal. And so he brought Gio on. And all of a sudden, Gio was like, yo, duh. And this is what's crazy about Reyna. People love to trash him still to this day. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. To this day. When was the last time Gio had a really poor game? I remember a few mediocre games. I don't remember a really poor game. The only game I can remember is uh, the one he started for Dortmund this season. And... He, against Hoffenheim? They started him out at left winger, I believe. And he it wasn't that he had a poor game. Don't get me wrong. He never lost possession. He just couldn't do anything. He was trapped over there on the left side. Every time he got the ball, he had three or four guys around him. Right. That's just no open space to work with. Yeah. So that's why I wouldn't play him there. 
Uh, it's why you're playing him in the middle of the park where he has more freedom to move and create uh, in, inside of open space. So uh, we'll see what happens there. All right, we've got, um, let me see if I can do what Brett does often. And that is, see, I, I don't know how to plan ahead. So here we are. Here we go. Here we go. Transfer news, transfer news. Everybody loves that transfer news. But, mm. All right. That is the transfer news. That means we've got, this isn't necessarily transfer news. We always have to explain this. Transfer news could mean anything. And uh, it could, you know what? I should have played dual nat panic. That's what I was supposed to play there. See, Brett, you are so important in this show. I hate that you're in Florida, but I hope you're having a good time. That was supposed to be dual nat panic, dual nat panic. Cap them now. Holy shit. Cap them now. And this is uh, Tyler Miser. I didn't know about this kid. Now mm -hmm. there are two Dortmund kids. There's the mm -hmm. Coleman kid who plays for not the Dortmund 2 team and the Miser kid who plays not for the two Dortmund team, but the, the youth team. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, a guy that said that he is given an indication. It says that he's he would consider playing for the U.S. if pursued. Can you can you go to the tweet that was quoted and see what that indication is? I can't. No. Oh, okay. You'd need Brett for that. <laughs> no. If you just click on it, if you just click on it on Twitter. Oh, this is a slide. Oh, this, this is like a screenshot. Yeah, it is a screenshot. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me see I... if I can find him. Joshua, and I'll at least see what this evidence is because some sometimes they do that and you go, wait, that's your, you know. Well, anyhow, I mean, I, I looked this kid up. It's really too early, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, you want to keep an eyeball on everybody. But um, at some point, it's, it's way too – I would call him up to the youth squads. Why not? But not the Olympic team. I don't know enough about this kid yet. And I certainly don't know enough about Coleman. I know that he scored for us in a youth tournament, which is pretty awesome. But mm -hmm. I don't really start worrying about some of these teenagers until they're playing at Dortmund too. That's when I go, well, okay, that's a step up um, because the two team isn't just for youngsters. It's for players coming back from injury. It's for, you know, 24 year olds sometimes or 22 year olds. And so if you're a teenager and you're playing with the two team, then I'm going to start to consider, okay, right. maybe I'm going to pay attention. Like when Leonard Maloney was at the Dortmund two team, I'm right. like, okay, I'll, I'll start paying attention to him now. Uh, even though I was paying attention before that. Um, but then I was thinking, well, he might be able to make a career out of this now. So until they move there, I don't really consider. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are tons of kids in the Dortmund Academy that won't even become pros. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's just normal, you know. So let's see. And we've got, people don't know this, there are tons of Americans out there. In yeah. fact, um, Joel, uh, I'm assuming, I believe is his name, got his um, first minutes. Uh, he's 19 years old for Werder Bremen. Yeah. This weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I've known about him, but now he's playing some minutes for the first team. Mm -hmm. um, now I might consider, all right, now this it's time to take this kid pretty damn seriously if he's actually getting minutes. But yeah. then again, we've had other kids. And remember a guy named Indiana Vasilov? Yes. Yeah. I mean, so many kids. Yeah. What was that Dortmund prospect that got so many injuries that we never saw? He was before, pre-Pulisic. What was his uh, name? Shit. Yeah, so winger. Flores? Flores? Um, no, not for him. Flores was one of them too, but there was another guy who was a winger. I don't remember his name though. Like yeah, pre Pulisic, I think he even got like a few first team minutes with the like in a cup game or something. But then he was injured for years after that. And like, um, I'm not a pro. I'm checking the chat. To see Josh Gat? No, it wasn't Josh. No, Gatt. Josh Gat. Joe Zhao. Joe Zhao. Oh, Joe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's had a pretty successful year. I mean, he, uh, career in the sense that he came back to MLS, right? He's still yeah. playing in MLS currently now. He is? Um, he's still around? I mean, he got a career out of it, but he never became... Like, if we were watching Rankin and Joe Gao back in the day, we were so excited about the potential there. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, you saw some of those players, especially Rankin, and you're like, this has got... You know, there's some high ceilings here, but a lot of those guys didn't 
never really work out. Junior Flores, thank you, was one of the guy I was trying to think of. Who I remember him too? Yeah, he retired. Injury, yeah. injury, injuries, retirement. Um, guy was after Flores, says yeah. Jesse, Jesse Negron. All right, maybe I'm not so bad at this after all. So I'm going to remove that. <laughs> I love that you <laughs> narrate it. I have to narrate it because I'm so shitty at this. Oh, my God. All right. <clears throat> I don't know why I picked the slide, but I am I did save it for a reason. Hercules yeah. Gomez says, Haji Wright with another. Sergeant stays hot. Vasquez on the run in Mexico. Pepe and Balogun with plenty of competition. The U.S. women's national team has never had a pool of nines where it's been this competitive. And yet my, my worry is the system. Agree? Yeah. I mean, that's been our worry for five years. Yeah. You know, like that has never changed. The system remains the same. Our strikers don't score in it. Yeah. And I mean, that's been the point all along. The other point would be that even though there's lots of competition, nobody's really at the sort of Polistic level or the Reina level, right? Yeah. I mean, it's nice to see the competition, and I hope somebody reaches a point where um, – we get that kind of like top tier um, and people it's weird. So tack gets attacked for defending Balogun. Yeah. And, and I get attacked for criticizing him. Pretty yeah. weird. It's the nature of the game. You're going to have different opinions. <laughs> you know. I know, but it's okay. I guess my point is it, He's not had a great season, and yet he's still scored a lot. That's good, but it's not great, right? No, it's not great, but I don't know any other str – I actually agree with Tack mostly when I he know. defends uh, Balogun because we've never had a striker that can consistently score goals and be dangerous in a top-five league. Since, let me clarify, Dempsey, who wasn't even really a forward. But right. last time, that last time was Dempsey. And Dempsey retired from the national team or whatever seven years ago. Balogun now has two seasons under his belt where he's hitting double digit figures in a top five league in the world. And that's with him having a bad season. So I, I tend to agree with that. I think he's having a bad season. I don't think anyone thinks he's not. Right. But, but he set the bar so high, right? At Red Rhin. And now he's playing in a different system where it doesn't really suit him, to be honest. And he's going to have to learn to adapt. And I actually think this is good for him. And yeah, I'm I'm not super worried, to be honest. I guess I'm not worried um, once we get past Greg. Yeah. Um, but I am concerned that Balogun, out of all of them, if you can include Pepe in this too, out of all of the strikers that we've just listed, he's the one that is the most square peg in a round hole for Greg's system. Yes. And for me, that's a problem because it seems like we're going to go ahead and always at least have one spot for him. That's always going to be there on the roster, even though he doesn't really fit what Greg likes to do. Yeah, but then that's Greg's fault. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Greg needs to switch it up. Or play Balo wide. I mean, have we ever considered? This is what we what, what I'd love to see in a friendly. Put Balo in Tim Weah's position. Just see what he looks like there. Not to replace Weah necessarily, but like you know, Weah. It's funny. Weah gets a bit of a free pass in USMNT circles um, because his club situation, to be honest, is not that different than Giovanni Reynas. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it hasn't been for a while. This is a guy who couldn't quite cut it at Leo, had to end up becoming a fullback. Now right. he's at Juve, but he never starts. He almost always gets 10 to 15 minutes off the bench. I think the reason that Wea gets a free pass is because he's a good boy, right? He doesn't, you know, quote unquote, have issues. He doesn't have an attitude. He's he likable. Yep. He's likable, right? Mm -hmm. But in terms of club situ and in terms of national team performance, you can't even compare those two. You can't even compare those two. It's just that Wei has had so much more opportunities than Gio, primarily because Gio's been injured. And I love Wei, but I think Wei kind of just sneaks onto the radar. And I get it. No one's challenging him for that right wing spot either, right? That's part of it. So people go, yeah, it has to be Wei. I have Wei starting for me. 
But why don't we try that once in a friendly? Try Balogun on the right coming inside, supporting Pepe or Sargent, and just see what happens. Yeah. No, I mean, I'd be all for it. Um, hell, in, uh, I, there are lots of things I'd like to see. Uh, I, would even, I wouldn't even mind having um, whoever you want to start at center forward. I wouldn't mind trying, um, as we watch today, Haji right play uh, left winger in a mm -hmm. pinch. Um, I think that's the option because, you know, we've been oh, shoveling Aronson and uh, Zendejas and we don't need to. We've got guys that have played winger that have done a good job and there's no need for us to struggle to find attacking options when you've got Sargent and you've got uh, Haji Wright who can play out wide as well. I, I By the way, I put up Brian Keo because I know you were really high on him. I liked him, yeah. Yeah. Um, not sure what's happened to him. Kobe Hernandez Foster. Um, can we can we like have a moment of silence for the three four three boys? Because this is it's a terrible, terrible record. Do you remember three four three? Are they gone? I mean, they're not gone, but like they're not they're not doing anything in soccer. Oh, they they're the ones that uh I guess train these guys, is what you're saying. Yeah, so okay. Brian Clyburn. Who I actually Clydes. agree with on a lot of his takes mm -hmm. was the LA Galaxy uh, Academy coach or Academy manager, I believe, the head right. coach. And he trained a lot of these guys Kobe Hernandez Foster, Uli Yanez, Alex Mendez, Brian Keo, uh, Johnny Perez, Maurizio Cuevas. Uh, what's his name? The Mexican right back. Um, uh, shit. The dual nat who now plays for as Barcelona's loaned him out. Um, oh, Rajo? Araujo, thank you, Julian Araujo, okay. okay. uh, Efra Alvarez. The record, and, and he was hyping these guys up like they should be starting for the U.S. now. Right. And a lot of us actually were kind of like, well, yeah, we're starting Roldan, so we might as well. You know, Sure. a lot of those guys don't even have careers, or they're like in the second division in Norway or the fourth division somewhere. Yeah. And, and, yet, and yet they're still kind of like, acting like they did they are they are the be all end all of american soccer development and if only the world would listen to them everything would be right you i'm know? glad you said that not me <laughs> no but it's true i know i called them out on it recently inverted fullbacks that's brian Clyburn on twitter he keeps deactivating his account when people call him out on who he is <laughs> really yeah oh my god that, i mean those guys used to be really frustrating because they were so sure they were right about everything no, yeah. they're 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 not though. They're not even eating humble pie. They're like doubling down. Like I'm still told that Sam Vines, they still think Sam Vines is better than A-Rob. That's still because he has a technical profile. He does not. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you saying? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't get that either. Obviously, Sam Vines, at least he tried. He went to Antwerp to yeah. work out, but um, there's a reason it didn't work out. And there's a reason they forgot to list him for the Champions League and Europa League games. Yeah. Out of out of sight, out of mind, I guess. Um, but yeah, hard to believe they're still defending them. Another guy you were kind of high on, but I think everybody was. Justin Che. Oof. Yeah. He's uh out there playing for Adeo and Otto Den Hag in the lower divisions there. That's one I didn't see. I did not see that one coming. No. At all, Pete. Um no. I, I'm not even sure because he was loaned out to Scandinavian team and then they sent him down to Adeo, yeah. where he is now playing. He didn't play this weekend, but um, sure. what's going wrong here? I mean, that's a really stupid question to ask, but just in your mind, what's I going wrong? Yeah, I actually don't know. I don't think it's a lack of talent. I think he could play at least for, you know, in the Air Divisie. Like you look at his under twenty performances, they really weren't that bad. They were pretty good, you yeah. know. Him, Josh Winder, and Brandon Craig. There's another sad story. Brandon Craig. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen to him. Um, but it, it didn't really make sense because you could see he had the talent. Maybe, maybe it's an attitude thing. I don't know. People use that with Geo, so I, I'm hesitant to use that without knowing for sure what it is. Or maybe there's something about him that we're just not seeing. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, I know I saw Conrad De La Fuente uh, tweets all over the place because he scored a brace. 
have yeah. to say neither of the goals were like, wow, he just, that was all him. Um, but another kid that's rarely or barely played for Ibar this season in the Segunda. I mean, we're not talking like he's playing for the worst team in Spain or one of the worst teams yeah. in Spain like Celta. He's playing for Ibar and he can't, he's not a starter and he's lucky to get five or 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, so I guess people can hold on to that for as long as they want. But um, at some point you got to you don't need to pull the plug on somebody. I'm not saying that, but I think the dream of them contributing to the U S men's national team in any significant way or yeah. at all going forward, you have to at some point uh, fall to the, some sort of real world about that. Well, I mean, look at Kevin Paredes. He wasn't even, he didn't even make the roster this time around. Right. And this is a guy who's starting in the Bundesliga. Yeah. So if Kevin Paredes doesn't make the roster, I think Conrad has a lot to climb over. Taylor Booth is another one that I just don't know what's going to happen because this kid cannot stay healthy. Just as he starts to get some traction, he gets a bad injury. And then when he comes back from his injury, he takes a long time to get back into form. It's not like he comes back and he's sharp. He comes back. This last one took months for him to get back into form. And then he finally had a couple of games. They're like, oh, my God, this is the old Taylor Booth. And then, bam, got injured again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Taylor Booth's kind of a sad story. Um, I don't know about you, but I also get a lot of comments about, what about Griffin Yao? It's like, okay, oh, can, can we just chill the hell out on Griffin Yao? I've been going at it with Houston fans about him because they get real mad at me. I mean, we're not ready to go there yet with Griffin Yao. First of all, he plays for Westerlo. It's not like he's playing for... Oh, you're like Griffin Yao. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Griffin Dorsey. Never mind. Oh, yeah. No, not him. Not even him. But Griffin Yao is the one... Uh, that always comes up. It's like, yes, okay, great. He scored a goal um, for the Olympic team, U23s. Yeah. So did Kate Cal because they didn't know his one trick. Yeah, and, and his one trick also got deflected, let's be honest. That's true, yes. Uh, I brought this up um, because uh, who has a bigger role left to play with the U.S. men's national team? And I thought, why are we even asking this question, and why is Hayes Ferreira's name on there? Why are either of their names on there? Like, yeah, I'm I'm glad the poll came out fifty seven point five to neither. Yeah, but but, but there are who, still thirty three percent of these thirteen hundred people that believe Brandon Vasquez. And I'm not saying he has nothing to offer, but he's my sixth choice nine right now. Yeah, I mean he provides a lot of the same things that Pepe provides in the box. Um, he's a good header, so is Pepe. So is Sergeant, so is Haji Bright. And uh, unless you suddenly believe that, um, you know, the Mexican League is way better than the championship, which I don't think it is. I think it's it it's inching closer to actually MLS than it is championship ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see if I can find any questions here on the side. So I'm not really I, good. I do have to get going here soon, maybe one or two, because I'm – I, I okay. Get out of here. All right. All right. So what we'll do, I know. By the way, you missed it at the beginning because Pete's got to go. <laughs> He's got to go soon. Um, let me put this up. Oh, I got to get rid of this. And one of the problems is, of course, I'm really bad at this. So uh, <laughs> remove from studio. Okay. Brett, you, you're a genius, dude. I don't know how you do this shit. This is just, this is really, really hard. All right. Add the stage. There we go. All right. Let's do Copa. Yeah. Before you leave. So we do know um, the winner of Group D plays the second place team in Group C mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's the issue. More than likely, we're, I mean, I'm, I'm asking, we're going to finish second in our group, right? That's more than likely, yes. And I think, I don't know if that's even so sure. Yeah, well, yeah, beyond the, like, doomsday shit, you know, like, we finished third and don't even get out. Yeah, I mean, if we know Greg, who's, like, minimum expectation Greg, then we're going to finish second in our group, and we're going to lose to Brazil in the quarterfinal. If I had to put money on the most likely outcome, it would be that. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm thinking we finish second and then we end up playing Brazil in the next round. Yes. 
which couldn't have been a worse pick, I guess, unless we had to play Argentina. Um, yes. If we were in Group B, um, like Mexico is. But more than likely, Mexico has, I think, a better chance at winning Group B, as bad as they are, than we do winning our group. Would that be true? I, I don't think Mexico is good enough to win Group D. They have a better chance, but I think Jamaica and Ecuador are both going to give Mexico hell. Okay. So they could end up um, playing Argentina and be knocked out just like us. Yeah. Second round. Um, so we lose. We lose to um, Brazil in the second round. What's acceptable in that loss for you? What does that look like? I think it has to be a close loss. Um, I do. I think if you're going to lose, it better be 2-1 and you better put on a hell of a performance. It can't be what we saw against the Netherlands in the World Cup where we were never really in the game. Um, but also, look, acceptable or not, that means he would leave without a signature win. Right? If he doesn't get that win against Brazil, if he doesn't make it out of Brazil, he doesn't get that signature win. He will never be fired if we get out of the group, and not in a million years. He could lose 10-0 to Brazil. I don't think he'd be fired. Um, yeah. But what, why can't we talk about winning the group? We're at home, and yes, Uruguay is a very good team, and they have a very good coach who's maximizing the strengths of their players right now. But the idea that we cannot win this group, that Uruguay is just miles ahead of us. Look, even if Greg doesn't get that signature win, but he tops this group, over Uruguay, beating Uruguay in the process, and then beats Colombia in the quarterfinal and loses in the semi, that's a good tournament for me. If you get out of Uruguay and Colombia and then you lose to one of the top two teams, fine. Right. Fine. We'll all take that, right? But if you get second in this group and you couldn't do anything, and it's not even people go, oh, well, what, you think we're supposed to beat Uruguay? I think we should give ourselves a chance with the player pool that we have. Exactly. You know? Yeah. No, I think that's really been frustrating. Um, I mean, are there really good players on Earth? Are there absolutely are? Yes. But uh, I mean, we now have, uh, I think, a roster that is finding some depth. I'm still worried about center back. I'm still worried about goalkeeper. Yeah, Those things that I lose sleep. I don't really lose sleep. But I mean, if I were going to lose sleep, that's those are the two positions I would worry about. But yeah, I mean, there the expectations should be higher. The point, though, being that I don't think if we finish second in the group, that any mainstream media will bat an eye. They'll just be like, "Well, you know, hey, we made it out of the group, Pete. Yeah, why don't you chill, dude? The what's bare your, minimum media. What's your problem, dude? Why you got a problem, man? Why are you always so negative? And we we really need to get to a point where that's the norm. Um, where the expect expectation is that we should get out of the group. And if we don't, there's a reason. And we should be thinking about what those reasons are. And then we should be talking about what those reasons are. Nobody ever talks about in tactics, dude. No Most one talks about it. don't even have the brain to talk about tactics. I'll be quite honest, Derek. Most of these guys are not soccer people. And even the ones who are, I don't know. They Either they think... Either they think that the fans can't handle the tactics, which is not true because we all talk about it on our shows, right? Or they go, oh, we don't want to, you know, we want to make the game just simple and easy. And I actually think a lot of them don't know the first thing about tactics. They really don't. So they have to resort to platitudes. Yeah, I think you're right there. Um, I would think that somebody, I know Brian Shredder, for instance, knows about tactics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't really ask tactical questions, which I think is important because it's really is. Uh, I watch uh, who's who's Roger, the guy, um, the two guys in run the show that they're dressed up nicely. Anyhow, Roger said one of the few guys um, to say, hey, it's Greg's system. That's a problem. I, we need to talk about it. But yeah. nobody really does talk about it. And then Greg won't talk about it either because in his interview, last interview, he said, well, I could talk about what we were doing out there tactically, but I don't want to get in trouble with Stephen Goff and all these, um, you know, these journalists. And I'm like, that's a really weird thing to say. And I think he was kidding, but I'm not even sure if he was. 
no nah, man soccer media in this country is a bunch of cucks honestly like talk about getting pegged they've all been pegged by u.s soccer every last one of them yeah <laughs> pegged yes indeed um didn't scuffed am i wrong in saying and yes it was roger bennett from men in blazers thank you bmr um didn't scuff just say we we've got our signature win did i hear that i heard that through the grapevine I don't know just, if they said that or didn't say that. I know Vince, one of their the guys on Scuff, was trying to act like the friendly against Morocco was was the signature win. Um, wow. There's wow. a lot of not, you know, Velasquez thinks that we are not doing the bare minimum because his ELO ratings tell him that Mexico has not gotten worse. So whatever you see on the field, whatever you see with their player pool, none of that matters because he has a chart. And if you don't agree with his chart, you are stupid. This is, this is, no, honestly, this is scuffed these days. I, what happened? Yeah, I wonder. I don't know, but I will say a lot of that coincided when Matt Doyle, uh, you know, came on the podcast and him and Andrew Wiebe became Patreon supporters. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I guess you get to a point where you can actually make a living from what you're doing and you can't cross a line then because you don't want and to. Or won't. Like, I, I, I despise cowardice in all forms, Derek. I know you have to make a living, but I would never sell my soul to make a living. No, I agree. And I think that's why we we can hear someone like Kirk call Greg a Muppet, and he's fine. He's yeah. got the he's got the ESPN shield and he's yeah. not worried about losing his job. But maybe when you're you're scuffed and you just started getting into the area of making a living, that's when you're like, okay, well, you know there's a ceiling on what we can say. And we're going to stay under that ceiling. Yeah. I mean, would that be fair assessment? I don't know what's going on. at scuffed HQ. I haven't listened to that podcast. In a long <laughs> I time. used to, I don't anymore. I man. used to as well. I stopped. Um, I I'd love to stay and get on this man, but I'm already 15 minutes. I know. I All right. Thanks run. Pete. I appreciate Thank you hanging so much, with me. Guys. guys. All right. Thanks for having me. I'll try to come along soon when I have more time. All right. Peace out, man. Have a great night. Thanks, Brad. See you guys. Oh, you mean Derek, but that's all right. <laughs> all right. So Pete has left us and uh, I just want to apologize for how crappy I am at this. So yeah, I'm going to carry on solo. It's going to be rough. Um, I'm going to, you know, talk about some of the things that happened this weekend. And um, yeah, Jacob Ramirez, thank you for the 199 brother, especially for this poorly run show where we did 10 minutes of the show literally 10 minutes of this show was done and it wasn't live because i forgot to hit go live i played the intro i played the countdown pete and i had a great talk about um his acting career uh we talked about jeff carey who did a super chat on pete's last show that said i was an idiot comparing the Liverpool Bayer Leverkusen game to the NIT what I was saying there I was making indirect comparison because of course you got March Madness that's the big trophy and then you got the NIT National Invitational Tournament that's the second trophy and all I was saying Jeff was that the second uh, they're playing for the second place trophy, the second tier trophy. I didn't say Bayer Leverkusen and Liverpool wasn't going to be a fabulous game played by two amazing teams who are at the top of the table in their leagues. But that's the thing about comparisons and metaphors. There's nothing, nothing um, about a making a you can't make a direct metaphoric comparison. So if you're expecting, and that's how the world works, if you're expecting a direct comparison. Then I suppose even if you pick out two oranges from a, the same tree, they're both oranges, but they'll never, you can compare them and they're not going to be exactly the same. So um, anyhow, something for folks to uh, to think about. Oh boy, I see another super chap. I'm going to keep that my eye on that one. Uh, Jacob, thank you. Return to of Derek and S3X doll if we beat Brazil. Yeah, I mean, I guess I might have to do that, honestly. I might have to go out and get a sex doll uh, to celebrate. And um, last time the sex doll ended up pegging me, at least in a cartoon. Uh, Will Greg says, or Greg, Greg, for $5, American public loves strategy with football and basketball. It's kind of insulting. Mainstream media doesn't think we can't handle it with soccer. No, that's absolutely true, Will. 
absolutely true. Um, I mean, you look at journalism, sports journalism done in this country. It's all about the big take. It's all about some of it's fake as hell. There's no doubt about that. Some people just want a lot of attention. Um, but in other cases, it's about being critical and hypercritical of coaches. I mean, who get crapped on more than, I guess, the Dallas Cowboys coach? He got he gets slaughtered for being an idiot. And I don't even, I mean, I watch enough football to know he wouldn't be a coach I would hire. But he gets pummeled, that is for sure. Um, let's see, another one from Will. American public loves strategy with football. Oh, it's the same one. My bad. See, that's why I need Brett. People have said before, what does Brett exactly do on the show? He's the glue to the show. Like, without Brett, like, I'm just here to talk. I'm not here to manage all this shit. I can't do all this shit at the same time. I don't know how he does it. Well, I know how he does it. He ignores what I say, right? Uh, talk about P. Diddy. I, too early to tell? Doesn't look good, does it? Doesn't look good for P. Diddy. Um, stories are bad. Uh, the inferences made so far. The implications, not good. Getting raided, not good. Having all your laptops picked up by the FBI or whomever that was that raided his house. It's not good. Not looking good. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the things that happened this weekend. I mean, Horvath just played today, right? And he had a good game. Did not have as great of a game on Friday as Cardiff lost. Haji Wright had another really good game on Friday, but he played pretty well in this game today for Coventry City, but they lost. So not really his fault in any way. Uh, Lynn and Gooch is still injured for Stoke on Friday. Didn't play. Sergeant, another 90 minutes and a goal and a win. But then they lost today. And Sergeant didn't have as great of a game today as he did on Friday, Dwayne Holmes, 85 minutes and a goal and a win for Preston North End, but he's out of the he's out of the picture, people. All right, Dwayne Holmes probably never going to play for the U.S. as long as Greg is the coach. Um, just not going to happen. I or we've already talked about the conflict they had at practice. That's from behind the scenes from a reporter who was at the practice. So there you go with that. Let me see if I can scroll down here. I'm not. I'm way behind the chat. Sorry, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. I'm going to move on until I see something I can post. Um, Reggie Cannon, he's basically done at QPR. He hasn't started for like three or four games in a row now. Hasn't seen a single minute. Um, not good. Not good. Um, oh, I see the hide current comment thing now. Oh, sheesh. Um, also, uh, Matthew Hoppy done at Middlesbrough. We all know that already, but he's not playing anymore. He's not even making the bench. Hasn't been in on the bench for ages. Um, Gideon Zalalem is back from injury and playing for Den Bosch in the second tier in Holland. They lost. They're one of the worst teams in Holland, uh, but he did go 90. And John Hilton went uh, 62 and Osadina went 75. Um, in the second tier as well. Just young kids to keep an eye on, right, uh, in Holland. And Rick Van um, Hees went 65 for Utrecht 2 in a loss. So that's Friday. Um, more stuff obviously happened over the, the weekend. Where is Brett? Where is Brett? Yeah, well, we had Pete on, but he hasn't had an acting class to go to, so he could only do an hour. Um, and, uh, or a little less than an hour. Brett is in Florida. Um, getting pegged by EB right now, somewhere in a hotel room. He's on vacation. So let's, uh, wish him well and hope he's having a good time. It's the first time I've ever hosted this show by myself. Well, I didn't start out hosting it by myself, but yeah, here I am by myself. Tyler Adams, by the way. I wouldn't call it the man of the match, but I guess he won the man of the match. I mean, the dude looks like he hasn't missed a beat um, for Bournemouth. I was really surprised he started and went 90, honestly. Um, but he looked great. He closed down lanes. 
He was everywhere on the pitch. You know, typical Tyler Adams stuff. So not surprising um, if you watch Leeds. But the fact that he's come back and now been this strong is quite amazing. And uh, I just want to say thumbs up, Tyler Adams, for what was a surprisingly, shockingly good game. Gio Reyna went 30. Kind of talked about this with Pete already. It was a pretty good 30. Um, it didn't blow my nuts off or anything. Uh, of course, we all hope he would have scored maybe or got, he got a, I know, what is that? Hockey assist? That doesn't count. Um, but, you know, he was there to move the ball along to the right places on the field for that goal to, to occur. As Pete said, and I totally agree, Nuno's really backed himself into a corner. He has no choice at this point but to play um, differently. He needs goals. He can't get away with ties. Ties are not going to get him out of the bottom um, of the Premier League. He needs wins. And the only way you get wins is to go for it. You can't sit back and hope for ties anymore. Those are not going to win, get you out of relegation after the four-point penalty. So we might see a different playing style from Nuno. We might see Nuno take more chances. Because I certainly didn't think Reyna was going to get 30 minutes. I thought he was going to get 10, 15, like per norm, before whatever injury he supposedly had. Um, and then with Nuno's press conference, I mean, there really wasn't much hope. It didn't sound like he was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play a lot of that Gio Reyna going forward. Didn't sound like it. So I guess this uh, is a positive. As I said, I have the crow that I'm supposed to eat in the freezer. I haven't defrosted it yet, but um, if I have to, I will. Chris Richards was on the other end of that game for Crystal Palace. He went 90, and I'm not sure what's going on with Chris Richards because he looks really nervous on the ball, like his passing's not really that great. Um, Didn't have a bad game, but not. It's not the Richards we saw last year um, for the national team. There's something not quite right going on there because we know he can do it. We saw him do it, you know, pretty well when he was playing center defensive midfielder um, earlier in the season. He wasn't asked to do that much, but he looked pretty comfortable on the ball. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um and I'm not talking about last year, by the way, BMR at his club, I'm talking about for country. And I know there weren't a lot of games to go on there, but he never looked like even going back to when he was playing in the Bundesliga, he always looked pretty comfortable on the ball. He looked nervous yesterday or this weekend. And we know he can do better. Uh, Trusty uh, played against Robinson. And uh, Robinson went 90. Ream was in the 18. He's not going to play anymore this season. Not much, Ream. I mentioned it already. Ream's not going to play much. Um, listen, I mean, Bassey and Tosin are just too good. Um, they don't really provide some of the passing out of the back that Ream provides. But, you know, physically, um, they're just, um, they're better players. They're younger. They're faster. So I don't see Ream getting a whole lot of more. Uh, playing time. Um, yeah, Labrador, I'm going to put that up there. That's a good, that's a good observation. I mean, you could actually say that Robinson was accountable for some of those goals. That was really disappointing. That's a game as a Fulham fan. I expect us to win. And um, this has been like three mediocre performances in a row for Robinson that I've seen in a row. Not sure what's going on. Um, but yeah, definitely not one of his greatest defensive uh, games I've ever seen. That's for sure. Also, uh, Brendan Aronson um, went 65 for Union Berlin. And it's the second game in a row that Aronson looked really good. Unfortunately, like the other game before when he scored, this time he had a couple opportunities and when he was near the box, he choked. That's kind of going back to old Aronson in a way where whenever he gets near the box, he gets nervous. 
right? Gets really nervous, just can't focus, can't hit a clean shot. So if he could fix that part, um, he might be on his way to being like getting back to progress because the game before this, not only did he fix the um, nervous, I'm nervous because I'm near the box. Like some guys get nervous when the first time they get around a box, if you know what I mean, but not, um, you know, it, it, it's something that's plagued Aronson for a good couple years now. And I was hoping that one goal would get him over it, but he missed a golden opportunity in this uh, Union Berlin game. But he played well, and he got in the right spots. So let's hope um, he continues to move forward. John Brooks didn't play because of red card accumulation. And Balogun, listen, we talked about it earlier. He got two goals. And if, you know, if Balogun is not going to play spectacularly, but he's still scoring all these goals... I guess you got to say, got to hand it to him. Not playing well and but still playing well enough to contribute. So, um, oh, by the way, that game with Brendan Aronson was against Frankfurt. And uh, good old Timmy Chandler played. So, um, Labrador also says, Aronson looked really good the first half. He did, except for that. that. Listen, anybody can miss those, but... You got to take them. You got to take those chances. Um, and then uh, this one by Chris Fulham were lucky not to lose that game. Sheffield with a huge choke. I'd agree. You're up that late in the game. Three to one. Yeah, you can't lose that game. Uh, big announcement is that Joel Imasuan, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Joel Imasuan got his first minutes. For Verda Bremen, the big boy team, uh, in a loss. So we'll see. Kid to keep an eye on. Uh, he is a forward. Always looking for those. So uh, we'll see. Paredes went 90 in a win at left wing back. Um, It was a win. Again, Paredes does his job. But um, he's not blowing anybody's balls off. Um, he's not doing anything spectacular. And I think that's um, who we want to see. The BMR says, who? Who? Joel. It's spelled I-M-A-S-U-E-N. Joel Imasuan. Imasuan. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll have to work on it and find out. Uh, McKenney and Wea. McKenney went 45. Wea went 30 in total terrorist soccer that was impossible to watch and made you want to vomit all over. It's really difficult watching um, Juventus play. And, you know, people are like, well, these players sat the bench This uh, when they came back. Well, just a note, Polisic asked to be sat. McKenney definitely needed the rest, according to his coach which is why he came in at halftime. Nothing to panic about, um, but a lot of the guys that have to fly the longer flights and travel further are the ones that are going to get the break. The guys that are just traveling a few countries over to play somewhere else in Europe to play on the team, they don't need a break, right? Um, at least not a long one. Uh, are we sure Derek isn't pulling random American names out of a hat and passing them off as huge prospects? Well, I can only say, uh, judgmental duty, go look it up. It happened. It's real. Uh, Joel Imasun did, in fact, play for Werder Bremen. Didn't get a lot of time. Doesn't matter. But, it, I, again, we don't want to get too excited because we got, some of us, got titillated when... Um, what's his face played for um, Aston Villa there briefly, and now he plays in St. Louis. But we thought, oh, well, he's just a he's just a teenager, and he got some rare minutes for Aston Villa, and people got excited. We don't want to do that because Joel might end up in MLS, which isn't bad. You can have a good career in MLS. Fasola, thank you, judgmental view there. Vasilev was the one that got some minutes with Aston uh, Villa, and we all thought, well, maybe there's some hope there. Maybe this kid is the real deal. 
And by the way, he was pretty high youth prospect in his day. A lot of people thought very highly of Indiana Vassilov. All right. What else we got? We got Musa. We got Pulisic. Musa going 30. Pulisic going 20. In a win. <coughs> I just got to say this. Musa must be the most frustrating player. Because you know he's so good in certain departments of the game. Like the ball st sticks to his feet like glue. He's really good at dribbling all over the damn place. What he's not really good at is finding that final pass or making that through ball. Now he should have scored in the game before this one because he did make a good through ball. The dude just couldn't finish it. But in this case, he missed a sprinting Pulisic out wide who had the pass been made earlier before they crossed, crossed the midpoint, midfield point. You know, it would have been a breakaway for Pulisic. In this case, it still ended up being a breakaway for Pulisic, and Pulisic scored it. But by the time Musa lifted his head and figured it out, by the time he kicked it, they were already past the halfway line, and Pulisic was a scrotum's length offside. Musa needs to fix this part of his game. It's it's pretty it's pretty frustrating, and um, I'm her I'm hoping that there's some noticeable progress to his game. He's really good at what he does right now, and I know he's young. I'm a little concerned about not seeing any progress for the last couple years, the last couple seasons. I'm concerned about other players in that way, too. Joe Scally, same thing. Not much progress. He seems to have, like, hit his ceiling which isn't bad. It's just not great. It's probably good enough to play for a, um, a Bundesliga team, obviously, because he does it. I don't know if it's good enough or, or good enough to play any better than where he's at right now. Like all the rumors to AC Milan and all that. <laughs> Hardy R. Seriously. All right, um, then Dest, Tillman, and Pepe and the whole PSV crew got together and decided to lay a big, a big fucking uh, egg. What a what a horrible game. I mean, Dest wasn't that bad. But everybody played like poop. Played like shit. Uh, yeah. Let me put this up here. Skelly has AC Milan rumors. He had some sort of rumors like that. It was a joke. And even Scally's like, well, it's so nice to be thought of. But I got to focus on where I'm at, right? Yeah, well, we all knew that was it's a bunch of horse shit, honestly. All right, Pax and Aronson went 90 at Vitesse and a loss. They are near or at the bottom of the table in Holland. So thank God this is a loan. Um, because they are the worst team or one of the worst teams in Holland. Uh, Johan Gomez, 68 minutes for Braunschweig, Braunschweig, who moved out of relegation in two Bundesliga up to 14th. So um, the older brother is doing all right at 68 minutes. He's not scoring a whole lot of games. Um, he's not a major contributor to the team um, score-wise or assist-wise even. But he plays a lot. And yes, Braunschweig is where Liverwurst is from. We call it Liverwurst there. It's generally known as Braunschweig. So um, Zendejas is injured. And then we had uh, David Rodriguez. Went 20, a 21-year-old dual nap. Uh, went um, 18 minutes and a loss for San Luis in Liga MX. Um, Dante Polvara back from the injury went 23 for Aberdeen, although he's been back for injury for a few games. He's not playing as much. He actually had won the starting role before his injury. And then we already talked about Conrad. They left Fuente early. I would not bust out the lube. I would not get that excited. It's just no point. He scored two goals. 
Um, they were all right. Hey, I, they were great. Nothing to, um, it's not like he dribbled through the whole team or he zip pack past four or five players or something like that. The point for him is this might be a way for him to gain some confidence. Although I don't, as I understand it, confidence is not his problem at all. That's the opposite of his problem. Um, this was the most significant amount of time Conrad's played for ever for Ivar. And it was only 20 minutes. There have been numerous games he's not played at all or got five or 10. And we're talking about Segunda, people. Segunda. We're not even talking like he's playing for Santa Vigo. One of the worst teams right now currently, not in relegation, but certainly not a great team right now in uh, La Liga. So a little painful, but good for him. I hope that is some way to boost his confidence back up. We'll see. Um, Sunday, Emmanuel Sabi, 65 minutes and a loss for La Habra. Uh, Maloney did come on in extra time to seal the tie for Heidenheim this weekend. So back from injury there. Luca De La Torre is still injured. Cardoso was in the 18. This is a little odd because now this is a couple games in a row where Cardoso started off the bench. In this case, he doesn't play at all. A little concerning. I mean, we'll see. Maybe it was the travel and all that. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I hope it's nothing. We'll know, I guess, whenever their next game is, which I think is next weekend. Um, and then we've got um, Kave, Zahiro Leslam. I know some people are going to say it's another player I'm making up, but he plays for St. Truden. And um, he played 72 minutes in their win um, this weekend. Young kid, tall. I've only got to watch two games of his this season. Um, pretty, pretty impressive figure as a, a character. I'd like to see him score more for a center forward. I don't think he scores enough. He started off the season a little hot, kind of cooling off here. He had an injury midseason. So like to see him get back to scoring goals. Kave Zahir Oleslam. Zahir Oleslam. Uh, and then we had Reynolds and Yao. Uh, both of them did not dress. I'm not sure why but they did not dress for Westerlo. Anthony Fontana was in the 18 for his wall. Taylor Booth, we all know, is injured. Zach Booth went 90 in a loss for Volendam. Volendam. Now, they're the ones that are an absolute last bottom of the table. They are the worst team in Holland. Worst. Um, Alex Mendez in the 18. This is Greg's homeboy. Alex Mendez in the 18 for Vizela in a loss. Um, what are we saying here? Let's see here. St. Trudent didn't make the championship playoffs in Belgium, though. Yeah, I know. It's all right. It's okay. I mean, I'd, I'd love that to be the case. Um, but yeah, that's a point. All right. Um, Sebastian Soto, get the hell out of town. Sebastian Soto, back from the Alps, shaved his beard, came down the mountain, out of his cabin, healthy, beginning of the season, immediately re-injured his back after a friendly for Klagenfurt in Austria. Well, guess what? He played 20 minutes. He's back. He's back. Sebastian Soto. He's back. He didn't score, though. Didn't see the game. George Bello was um, on the opposite side of that game. But even though his team won, he didn't play. He didn't play. Not playing. Come on, Bello. What's up there, man? This is an Austrian team. 
can't play on an Austrian team, Lask? Come on. At least Sebastian Soto's got an injured back. You're just riding pine. Come on, man. Let's kick it up a notch. Jonathan Amon, 10 minutes for Ligniby. Uh, Fabian Hertzler, I know. He's not really American. <laughs> he's just born here. Uh, a win for St. Pauli. Um, and St. Pauli in the Bundesliga, too, are still in first. Um, let me, I got a question here, so I'll bring it up. Matthew O asked, Derek, would you consider having a U.S. men's national team youth expert on? I think it would be interesting to hear how the next generation is coming along. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing about that. No one's really an expert at that, Matthew. Um, we were talking about a whole host of players that um, youth experts thought were for sure Kobe Hernandez Foster, Brian Keo, um, Justin Che. And there's a whole host of others, highly touted by not only scouts, but guys that you would consider experts on youth. There is no such thing as an expert on youth. Because, I'm sorry, there is a time period that these players are going to have to grow through beyond either your knowledge of them or their training that you might have been involved in. We talked about the 3-4-3 four, three, four, three guys and um, how sure they were of all their players that they brought into the fold that they thought for sure were going to turn out. And most of them haven't. Almost all of them haven't. So, um, this is a good question from Labrador. Thank you for the 199. Any thoughts about Cassianos playing for the U.S.? I mean, listen, I'll think about it. He's a forward. I'd like him to score more goals for his team. That would make it easier for me to, you know, consider him. Because as I mentioned before, while there is a very competitive battle going on for center forward on our team, and even, you know, the backup spots at winger, what we're really looking for are guys that can score goals and continue to score goals and goals and goals, but do it at a higher level. Well, he's playing at a higher level. So if we were scoring goals, I would take notice. He's a good player. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to keep an eye on him. But, um, yeah, I'd consider it. I'd consider it. I'd like to see him score more goals, though. And uh, I'll keep my eye out for him. Uh, he's a good player. Um, all right, where were we? Smash and Soto. <laughs> Maximilian Dietz went 90 in a tie for Firth, who currently now sits seventh and fell out of the top of the table. Almost criminal at some of these games they're playing. Julian Green did not dress. I don't know if it's because he's got a case of anal herpes or he's injured or he's got red card accumulation, but he wasn't there. Wasn't even on the roster. I'm guessing it's injury, whether it be a rash or anal itch. As Chris Gary said early, earlier about Brett on X. Brett's not going to be on the show because... Of incessant anal itch. I'm pretty sure Brett would do the show with anal itch. I don't think he'd have a problem doing that. Just apply some cream and you trudge through the two hours, right? You drink a lot. You hardly notice it, right? <clears throat> BMR says, it's weird if they would allow that, to be honest. I'm not sure I know what we're talking about, but... Um... Oh, Rico Poe says... This is interesting. Conrad has some talent. Has not got the eye of the tiger. Um, Yeah, I mean, if you mean like he doesn't train hard, he's not a hard worker, doesn't seem to put a lot of effort. I mean, that's what his managers have said. I mean, when you have one say it, then you have two say it, then you have the third one say it. I guess that's eye of the tiger, right? Eye of the tiger, it's the thrill of the fight. Then got it. Maybe he needs to listen to that song, Rico. Maybe that's what needs to happen. Julian Vivas, thank you for the 199, brother. 
You think Fidel Barajas will choose us or Mexico? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't. I haven't known really who's going to pick who now for some time, except for the LA Galaxy guy who ate a lot of Twinkies. I knew he was going to pick Mexico. Um, but I don't, I didn't, wasn't sure where Araujo was going to do. So they're guys I'm not sure about. But I think for a lot of these players, it's going to come down to, all right, if I'm in my 18, 19, 20, say, and I'm looking at the next 10, 10 years playing for a national team, let me look at all the positions that are going to be filled on the U.S. Mass National Team for the next eight years. Do I have a chance at, you know, breaking into one of those positions? Yes, BMR. Thank you. Efren Alvarez, Twinkie guy. He actually kind of shaped like a Twinkie, too. Um, or if I am Fidel Barajas, do I look at Mexico and go, that team's a mess. I've got a better chance committing to them than I do committing to the U.S. men's national team. And in that case, you know, if you're making that kind of rational decision and it's not a decision of heart, or let's say your heart is split, as it can be. Then you have to go with a rational decision, even though your heart is split. Um, so I don't know the answer to that. And frankly, I'm not really that worried about it. I think it's too early to say exactly how good Barajas is going to be. Antonio, Antonio Banderas says, Efra Alvarez, we called him Hamburglar or Chicken Nuggets. <laughs> Did you seriously? That is funny. I was always told that his nickname was Twinkie, Twinkie Boy, or Twinkies, because he ate a lot of Hostess stuff. Not for any other reason, okay? Um, what do I got here? There's a name I haven't seen before. Gabriel Fernandez, or maybe I have, and Brett just doesn't bring you up. High straight red cards. Any future goalkeeper prospects we should be focusing on? Yeah, there's the kid at Barcelona. I'd keep an eye on him, uh, their youth programs. But, I mean, let's hope that his feet turn out to be good. He's young. He's like, what, 17, 18 years old? Somebody give me an age. Anyhow, what we really need is some of our gold keepers, because there's lots of them that are good prospects. Their problem is they're not good with their feet. They're not good with their feet. They're not horrible. But I'm hoping that Diego Cochin, there it is, Diego Cochin. Thank you. What's who got it first? Jasper. <clears throat> I think this kid's young enough and he's at the right academy where they do teach goalkeepers very early to play with their feet. Unlike our academies here in MLS, still not a major priority. But, you know, this kid's really young. He won't hit his peak as a goalkeeper coaching him for 10 more years. Goalkeepers hit their peak at 28, 27, 29, 30. So we'll see. We'll see. And I hope he turns out to be one of those great goalkeepers that can use his feet and is a great shot stopper. But we don't know. We don't know. We've had all kinds of crybabies go through the Barcelona system that didn't turn out to be contributors to the U.S. Men's National Team. Ben Lederman and his mom. Not that his mom was going to play for us, but you get the idea. His mom did a lot of crying for him in the media <clears throat> because, obviously, there are rules if you're under the age of 16, especially about young players being in Barcelona academies. And his mom claimed to have a job there. I jumped it. I wasn't sure with, if it was provided that job by Barcelona itself. It's a little sketchy. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. So he's 17, says Labradad. All right. Where were we? Max Dietz. Mark my words, Max Dietz will one day play for the U.S. men's national team. He will. That is going against 
everything in my soul to say. And the only reason I'm saying it is I've been following him for a long time. He's still young, but he's a starter. And all the word is that he's not going to be, if Firth don't get promoted, he's not going to be at Firth next year. There are too many other teams in the Bundesliga scouting him. So he's been really good for our youth teams. In fact, probably the only defender that really stood out in that last game versus France. Um, here's a good question. It's a really good question from Judgmental Deity. Do you think Dietz has a higher ceiling than Jalen Neal? I don't know. The reason I say I don't know is because Jalen Neal has barely played for LA Galaxy and the U.S. before he got injured. And I liked what I saw. I really did. But out of sign, out of mind, not necessarily, but certainly, we got to see how he comes back from that injury. Um, and until then, I'm not sure about the ceiling. Jalen Neal's ceiling seems to be high. Okay? That's all I can say. But we'll see what happens to him when he comes back from the injury itself. Uh, I bet money he will play for a mid-table Bundesliga team. I would too. Uh, Antonio Banderas, you not watch the show enough, I guess. We've been talking about Max Dietz for a while now. He plays for Gwertha Firth. In two Bundesliga, he's a young kid. He's like 21, 20. Uh, BMR says he's 22. Okay. Um, so that's who he is. He plays center back and he's a starter. Um, and he is being apparently ogled by Bundesliga teams for next season. Uh, Labrador says, Sorry, coach, and just turned 18 a few weeks ago. <laughs> Okay, no big deal. A couple months isn't going to make a big difference to me. Um, Jasper Redican, if Shaq Moore and Jackson Ewell can play for the U.S. men's national team, anybody can. Mm, nah, I mean, that used to be the case. I used to agree with you there. Because, um, I mean, if we're talking about the big boy U.S. men's national team, right? We're talking about the big boy team, not the B team, not the C team, not the D team, but the big boy team. Shaq Moore, outside of Greg's little, you know, screw up. She never even said what he said. Shaq Moore has no chance. Jackson Ewell's got no shot. And he hasn't had a shot for a good long time. Good long time. BMR says, uh, Pete thinks Neil will start at the World Cup for us, but I think he's being overly optimistic. I think 2026 could be a little too early. I tend to lean your way. Um, but 2030 is a really good shot. But we'll see. Will Jalen Neal go to Europe and become Justin Che? Because honestly, the projections for Justin Che as a player, at one point, we're just as high as they have been and are for Jalen Neal. So you just got to be careful on that, right? As I always say, don't whip out the lube yet. Got to wait a while. Let him turn 18. Let him turn 18. Uh, yeah, so no more Shaq Moore. Okay, that's not happening. Even with Greg's complete idiocy being involved. Julian Green, as I said, didn't play. But then you had Caleb Stanko, went 67 for La Mia in Greece. Who even knew who, who even knew Caleb Stanko was still playing? But he is still playing. He's playing in Greece. And La Mia are one of the better teams in Greece. So kind of weird, right? This is the first time I have read the chat in, uh, I don't know, a couple years. It's been kind of fun to read. Maybe I'll do it more. All right. Spencer Dares, he says, in terms of player pool, at what point will we have top five league or top eight league players in the Gold Cup rosters? Yeah, kind of looking that way, isn't it? I mean, the U23 team has got quite a few players. 
that play in some decent leagues. Not the best ones. You know, we're talking Serie B, Belgium. Could be worse. Could be worse. All right. Neil turns 21 this year, Derek. Yeah, still young. And then he lost a whole year from injury. And sometimes but guys bounce right back like from that, like McKinney and Adams. And then you got guys that don't bounce back from injury. Like what's his face in Dallas? The midfielder everybody thought was going to Bayern. Going to be the greatest midfielder ever. Injury, 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 injury. <clears throat> Done. And now he just got another one. Pomacall. Thank you, BMR. He's got another injury. He's gone for the season again. Some people are plagued with this shit. Let's hope that's not the case with Jay Neal. That's all I ask. Please. Let's not that be the case. Now, this is the first injury I know of for Jay Neal. So it's not time to panic there. Kate Cowell versus Brandon Vasquez in a Liga MX's head-to-head match. Boom, boom. Cal went 73 in a win. He f- precipitated an own goal. That's the nicest way to say it. He precipitated an own goal. And um, Chivas ended up beating Monterey. Vasquez has got 45. Relatively harmless minutes. CCV went 90 in a win. So he's back from whatever anal itch injury he had that disallowed him from joining the U.S. men's national team. I mean, you could say the same thing about Josh Sargent. Was he really injured? Really? I'm sure he was aching, sore, whatever. I'm sure that two weeks was great for him. But if I'm looking at the way things are so competitive at center forward and I'm Josh Sargent, I'm thinking, really? I kind of blew that opportunity because then I let Haji go take it. And Haji grabbed the bull by the horns. And now Haji's right back in the picture, probably ahead of me. I don't know. Maybe not. I mean, we all know Greg loves him some sergeant. So we'll see. Yeah, we did forget Angel Soto. (laughs) Here, I'm going to read this first. This is funny. That's sad. One of Mexico's best players plays in Greece and Stanko plays there, and we all forgot about him. <laughs> He's come up several times in the show. Uh, I, I bring him up when I do this Yank Report thing. Uh, John Kavulich, thank you for the $5, my brother. The good thing about Nations League finals being moved to March this year and going forward is that Gold Cup should get an ace squad. A squad. No more, more. I mean, we'll see about that. I mean, it's possible, I suppose. Um, This team does need to play together as much as absolutely possible before, you know, the next World Cup. So every opportunity, I think, is something you got to take. All right. Damian Downs also went 20 for Kuhn. Kuhn. That's how we say Cologne in Germany. And, yeah, another guy to keep an eye on. Again, wouldn't whip out the lube. Scored a goal the weekend before. Good player in an important position that we should always keep an eye out for, Damian Downs. Um, I watched his 20 minutes. He was he's fine. Not mind-blowing, but it's early on. So just give it some time, I suppose. All right. Somebody in X said Pellegrino's not that good. Exactly how do we quantify that? How do we determine someone's not that good? Actually, I would see Pellegrino is pretty good. Why would I say that? Because every team he's managed has had a shit budget. Shit budget. 
So people on X saying, yeah, he's not really that good. Hello, Green Matarazzo. He's not that good. His team before almost got relegated. He got fired. Dude, you know how many people get fired for managerial positions? They can't all be shit because almost all of them have been fired. So not fair to say he is shit or not that good. If you want to you want to say he's he's average, well, maybe we can have debate debate about that, but I I would argue the things that he's been able to do saving Hoffenheim's ass last season and keeping Stuttgart up for a season was it two seasons? Pretty good for the squads he had. Those were not good squads. Um, Lambertad for one ninety nine. Thank you, brother. Derek, you've captained the ship like a seasoned vet. No, I didn't really do that very good early. Lambertad, I did really bad. I forgot to actually start the show. So for 10 minutes, Pete and I did a show that no one was seeing. And Brett had to call me and let me know we were on live. <laughs> Thank God for Brett, or else we'd still be doing the show not live. Right? So I did I. I wasn't good. I didn't hit go live. I didn't hit go live. That's pretty piss poor. By the way, I am wearing a 30-year-old Bayern shirt that my grandfather bought me many eons ago. And I wasn't even a Bayern fan, but he was. So he's like, I'm going to buy you a Bayern shirt. I'm like, okay, Grandpa. I called him Opie. So Opie bought me this. It's kind of cool. A little fading, though. But these were the, that year, I guess. They wore the blue shoulders. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Steve says, but Stuttgart improved dramatically once they fired him. They're in the Champions League now. Okay. That's an observation. Surely. But we all know from year to year how drastically teams can change. Um, simply from having three or four different players playing. Different roster. Even if it's just a handful of different players can make a massive dis difference on a squad. So I'm not sure I'm putting that on Matarazzo. I'm not going to put that on. Don't put that on me. All right, Monday, that's today. Sargent went 90 in a loss. Dwayne Holmes went 90 in a loss. Sounding familiar? Haji Wright went 90 in a loss. Thank God Haji was playing Cardiff and Ethan Horvath, or else Ethan Horvath might have lost too. But somebody had to win that game. I guess it could have been a tie. Um, But no. Um, Horvath made some good good saves. Nothing shocking. Um, and even though Coventry lost, Haji didn't play poorly. Went on him. The loss, that is. <laughs> Ooh, I like this one. Let's put this one up. <clears throat> we improved dramatically once Greg was fired. Oh, wait. The media doesn't like that. <laughs> Yeah, he was never really fired. He was out of contract, right? So we did play better without Greg. I don't think there's any doubt. I think the joystick um, was deprogrammed just a bit. And the guys felt a little freer to go out and play. But don't ask me. Ask them. They're the ones that said it. Not me. Pepe said it. One more guy said it. Right? So Pete was on the show. If you're waiting for Pete, he was already here. You're going to have to rewind back to the beginning and watch the first hour. So Pete was here for like 50-something minutes, 55 minutes. Um, and then he had an acting class. I already knew about it earlier. He let me know a couple days ago, hey, I got this acting class to go to, so I can do about an hour at best. I said, hey, understandable. But quite frankly, let's be really honest. Not really good at playing the slide game. Hell, I got the same slide up I got 
from like an hour ago. I haven't I haven't changed it. I'm afraid to touch it. <laughs> no, no, I could change the slide. That's fine. I'm just not going to do it. It's safe just to leave it alone. By the way, Matthew Hoppy was did not dress again for Middlesbrough. I don't know if anybody's shocked by that. No, you shouldn't be if you are, but nobody is. We don't know what's going to happen to Hoppy now. We really don't. And I hate to say this is the end. Do, 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 beautiful friend. But it's not looking good. He could certainly go back to MLS again and play. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, I have my own personal stake in it. And I hope the kid comes out of this. I really do. Somebody wants to see the KY logo on the screen. Well, we always have it handy. Still in the box. Unopened. Um, their sponsorship ran out. I haven't really found any need to use KY. I find Vaseline to just be much more effective. Feels better, too. <clears throat> I mean, on on my, uh, my chapped lips, of course. Um, no, nah, you should never put KY jelly on your chapped lips because it does absolutely nothing to help. Zero. And then last but not least, we've got Reggie Cannon. I already mentioned he didn't play before on Friday. He didn't play again on Monday and, um, didn't work. Not going to work out for him there. Unfortunately. Uh, what's this mean? You're a spitter. Hmm. Never noticed that. Well, duck, I guess. Um, also, Mark McKenzie went 90 in a win today as well. So, all good stuff there for Mark. Although, I have to say, Mark McKenzie, not real sure, unless a bunch of guys break their legs, that... Um, He's really ever going to get a start for the U.S. Men's National Team. Oh! <laughs> I mean, Spitter instead of KY. Uh, spit is so ineffective, dude. I mean, it'll work in a pitch. Like, let's say you're hiking in the woods and you just want to uh, roll off into, like, some indiscriminate place and rub one out. And you forgot to bring anything. Yeah, Spit's going to have to do the job. Um, also works for actual real intercourse, but not really quite as effective as, I mean, you shouldn't really need it. I mean, for one part of the body, especially, I don't think, um, it's necessary for the vagina in an active state to have a whole lot of lubrication. It should have a little bit of its own lubrication, but if you're putting it in other places, then you might need to use some lubrication for the... Um, the smoothness um, of entry. Uh, you, you guys know what I mean. All right. Um, let's see. What else we got here? Just don't get circumcised. Um, I don't know. It was pretty much standard practice for any baby born in the U.S. military up until a certain point. So, I'm circumcised. I don't really, I don't really have any much uh, issue with it. Never really noticed it missing. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something, right? Could be. Since I never had it, I could be missing something. Okay, what else we got here as we are getting close to closing out this evening? Um, what the fuck are you all talking about? I just got here. Yeah, well, you're a little late. Um, we were talking about lubrication. Listen, we just did a solid hour and 50 minutes of soccer. I mean, just pure soccer talk. No jokes. No kidding around. Brett's not here. I'm all by myself. It was a rock solid as they say in the porn industry, 
show full of content. And um, uh, what in the hell is this? <laughs> Were your partners circumcised? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not a gay man, so I don't know about that. I don't I know how to answer that question. That's like, um, are you still beating your wife? Like, uh, what do you mean? I never did. <laughs> right. Um, I don't see a problem either way. Do what you got to do. Or, I mean, it's not your choice, really. They either do it when you're born or they don't do it. You don't get the choice. You don't come out of the womb and go, they're going to stick in. Or come out of the womb and go, leave my dick alone. No, you, it's your parents get to decide that shit. So it's really, you know. Oh. Yeah, are we talking about that? Yeah, no. Never experienced that. Thankfully, that's a horrible thing to do. Horrible. Have to say. And um, really don't care about your tradition if that's part of your tradition. That seems like butchery. Early stage butchery to me. Spencer for 269. Thank you, Spencer. I really do appreciate it, Mr. Darty. Muncie is better than the Greek soccer league. <laughs> Mm. Is it? I certainly know you don't mean the town itself. My brother attended Ball State for two years. He didn't like it. He ended up transferring to IU. Um, and I visited him Muncie a couple times. Kind of, uh, at least back then, in the 90s, early 90s, kind of a, not a very appealing city. Maybe it's changed. You can let me know, Spencer, if it's changed. Uh, okay. Jack Pineda says, I know in Filipino culture, you get to be uncircumcised. Until you're 18, then you get a choice? Ugh. Well, if they didn't already do it, I'm not going to go ahead and raise my hand at the age of 18 and go, you know, thinking about it, I'm thinking about it. Why don't you take out that really sharp item and cut off my foreskin? I think I'll pass on that at this point. If I could get through the first 18 years without it, then I don't really suspect you need it. There was a time in the 70s and 80s, 60s, 70s, 80s, circumcision was becoming standards in certain places because supposedly it stopped infections and all kinds of other stuff. I don't know if that has any basis in the truth or not. But it really doesn't matter whether it is or isn't, as long as you're comfortable with it. Right. But it seems a little weird to give you a choice after you're 18. Hey, you're 18. You can either smoke these cigarettes or have the foreskin cut off your dick. Which one do you want to do? I think I'll buy a pack of cigs. Oh, okay. Sounds like a good idea. Um, among Latinos, it is not standard practice. I would guess it is not standard practice in most Catholic countries. Right? So there's that. Um, Derek, what do you think of Juve's tactical switch? You're going to have to be a little bit more specific than that. A, I missed the game this weekend. First time I missed a Juve game in a while. And um, from all reports, it just sounded like more soccer terrorism to me. Like watching those games this year has been painful. Absolutely painful to do. The 
only thing that gets me through it is the McKinney's plays starts plays well only thing i uh, that's getting me through only thing um what's this father michael always preferred the extra skin i don't even know if it's a preference cuz like i said you don't really have that decision when it happens right um certain religions do it certain don't and um I think whatever you've got and whatever you ended up with is fine as long as you're good with it. But I suppose there could be some preferences I don't know about or benefits for having it that I don't know about because I've never had it. Well, I did. Obviously, when it came out of the womb, I wasn't born circumcised. That would be weird, huh? <laughs> well, we we're going to circumcise your baby, but he came out and it was already done. First child born without foreskin I've ever seen. All right, you're welcome to take them home now. All right. Um, what do I think about Inter as a possible spot for McKinney? I don't know how likely it is. I mean, Inter's done quite a bit with a pretty, you know, they're pretty conservative with their budget. Sounds to me. Like McKinney wants some good bucks, some good monies. So he did not accept his new contract. His agent told Juve to go stuff it in their rectum. So um, I don't know if Inter's willing to bust out the kind of bucks that McKinney is demanding at this point. And we'll see how this works out with Juve's you know, administration. This is a, a, this is a game of cat and mouse at this point. Right. That's what this is. All right. Um, final thoughts, anybody final thoughts. We're coming up on four minutes. This will end at two, a, two hours. Um, let me see. I had my foreskin extended. It's so much better. You can do that. You've got to, that's gotta be a joke. Right? It's got to be a joke. Got to be a joke. Right? Don't know how you would do that. Would you take the skin off your ass and put it there? Or would you borrow the skin from somebody who just got circumcised and put it on yours? Seems gross either way and unnatural. Gross and unnatural. Just like the island of Moreau. Right? That was gross and unnatural. You can't try to create animals that are also humans. That turns into something really, really horrible. Really bad. It's unnatural. You know, we should actually think about sometimes that in science, we have the capability to do all kinds of weird shit. You could have doctors take off your arm and figure out a way to sew it onto your thigh. And you would be really, really an extraordinarily odd looking person, but you'd be noticed by everybody if you wanted attention. Hey, there's that guy with an arm that comes out of his thigh. But shouldn't there be some sort of limitations to what we do? Shouldn't there? It does get kind of Frankenstein-ish. Pete, Mr. Morton. It does. We have not dissolved. I think you mean devolved into circumcision talk. Well, we're trying to close out the last few minutes of the show, Jack. And you participated in the circus cir circumcision talk. <laughs> but thank you for filling me in on Filipino culture. I appreciate that. Um, I did once have a staff that lived in Cebu when I worked for a big time corp, big corporation, major corporation run by a bunch of hoodwinks, thugs, and uh, ripoff artists. And um, one way we kept the bills down as 
Our follow-up calls all were done out of an office in Cebu in the Philippines. Our customers used to call us and say, why is it that when I call customer service, I have a really hard time understanding your customer service people? Uh, Because they have an accent? They're like, yeah, really thick accent. It's really hard for me to understand sometimes. That's because they're in the Philippines? Oh, well, I thought you guys were a U.S. company. Well, we are. We are, but we just don't like to hire, like, people and pay them money. So we go out and we hire the cheapest. Um, and we, we, we let them do that because they're, like, we can pay them pennies. Pennies. We'd actually have to pay American workers a salary to answer phones. So easier us to take advantage of other countries. All right. Well, that's one negative way to look at it, right? Being Mr. Mr. Um, Debbie Downer. A lot of people would say, okay, well, that's true. You are taking all these jobs away from Americans, but at least all these people, what, you know, is a, still a developing nation have jobs now. And that improves their lives, even though they're getting pennies on the dollar compared to what we would have in my company had to pay those. So anyhow, long discussion, long discussion. Can't get into it. Just telling you what happened. But the company was full of scumbags and grifters. And that company, which was a massive company, is now not. Because their customer service and the promises they were making to customers were out and out lies, which is why I quit after a year. Out and out lies. But I tell you what, for that year that I did market me, Mr. Major Corporation, I made a lot of money and felt really bad about it. Okay, we are getting near the end here. Chris Gary says, on the bright sides, our phones are cheaper than they would be if they had to pay American $15 an hour. Yeah, I'm not I'm saying. You can look at it that way, too. Everything's so cheap at Walmart because all the shit in Walmart is not made here. So there's always ways to look at this. But maybe there are some industries, industries we shouldn't be farming out to other countries. Like, let's say those industries that make parts for our jets, tanks, you know, self-defense stuff. Maybe that should be kept in-house. Because you don't know if, if they're going to always be your friend. And if they're not your friend, when you run out of those parts, you're not going to have those parts anymore. So now you have to build a whole industry out of basically thin air. Anyhow, things to consider, right? I'm not going to mention the company's name. I've done it before before on accident on this show before. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. They actually still exist. They're just really, 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 really small. And I did sign a contract. I'm not really allowed to name them. When I was hired, I'm not allowed to criticize them in any way. I mean, they're not going to come after me now. It's been years, right? It is thundering outside here, people. It is. Um, we're going through a storm. Going through a storm. What do we got here? Derek worked for Lockheed Martin. <laughs> Listen, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. But it wasn't good. Okay? It wasn't good. All right. Listen, people. It's two hours, three minutes. I want to thank you all for showing up tonight. I had a lot of fun doing this by myself. Not really as much fun um, without Brett. I mean, I got to say that, right? Um, because it's been a tougher show to do without Brett. Because I'm really bad at this, doing the slides, asking the questions to Pete, putting up the next slide, reading your chats. Like, I mean, it's like asking a guy to jerk himself off and three other dudes. Like, that's too much work, right? It's too much work. I mean, I wouldn't know, but I'm imagining that's too much work. But I had fun. I hope you guys did. I love you all. Um, we will be back, or I'll be back on Thursday. I don't really have a guest yet. 
I don't have a guest. So it could be just me all by all by myself. But we'll see. Until the next time, say hey to your stepsister for me. And hey, enjoy your foreskin if you've got it. Good night. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> then what is this thing? Gio should never play for U.S. men's national team again because of the action of his parents. Because what an idiot! Oh, type of Muppet does this? Muppets, absolute Muppets. I, I'm not going to be the best person to give a whole explanation here, but that's. Booty, 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 booty. booty. Fucking deal with it. What are we really doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can agree with that. There are a zebra in between a tarantula and an elephant. Has been nothing more than a sham. But yeah, we didn't play well, but you know what? At the end of the day, we got the job done. It's going to be a good time for sure. Oh, sex with the first cousin would indeed be incest. And-